Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just thought that I would give uh, before, um, I would give first a, a brief introduction to the history of our gallery, uh, just because you may wonder why uh, an Italian born, studied in London, ended up dealing in Asian art, living in Hong Kong, and talking to you about the Hong Kong art market uh, after our two illustrious, my predecessor in this talk. So it's, it's the story of the business starts in 1970 when my mother started traveling in Asia. And uh, my mother, who is still active in the business, she's almost 84, but an indomitable force. Um, she started taking me to places like Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, when I, when I was a little boy, 1974, 75. And uh, in fact, I came to Hong Kong in 1975. It was a very different Hong Kong. There was certainly no fine art Asia. Um, and not so much in terms of, uh, well, there were a lot of shops. I remember we were going to the, all the shops in Hollywood Roads already then, uh, but it was really a very um, a smaller environment and very welcoming environment. And so our connection with Asia go back a long time. Um, and our, uh, when, when I joined the business in 1980, so these are some photos from that period, um, how we were traveling it was a different time. You could travel all over without too many worries. Um, and then um, when I joined the business, with, uh, when I joined my mother in the business, I would studied in London. She moved to London as well. And we started working together. Um, uh, uh, actually, it was 88, not 89, even earlier. Um, but um, from the very beginning, we tried to... I do our business in a, in a um, uh, professional way, which means um, organizing exhibition, uh, printing and publishing catalog uh, with the help of um, international scholar who would write the catalogs for us. Uh, we felt that um, there was a need in our field, specific field is actually early uh, Himalayan art, uh, from, so Buddhist art from Northern India, the Himalayas, Tibet, Nepal, Mongolia. And I think that, that we felt that was, uh, it was important to not just uh, trade, but also to give something back. And so we exhibited, we, we published, as I say, a number of specialized catalog uh, over the years. And we also exhibited in different places. Um, we, we first were, of, of course, developing our gallery in London, uh, but we also started uh, exhibiting, sorry, in uh, places like, I don't know, Santa Fe, Paris, New York. We were doing Tefaf Maastricht in the 90s, uh, Asian Art Fair in New York in the 90s. So in a way, broadening our reach, meeting more people, meeting more clients. And of course, at the time, the market was very much about uh, Asian art mostly going to the West. Uh, our main clients were private collectors in Europe, America, and museums in Europe and America. Uh, around 2005, I started, uh, uh, as my personal interest in contemporary art, I started w working with young uh, uh, contemporary artists, initially mainly from Tibet, but now we represent artists from Cambodia, from uh, um, Iran, from uh, uh, Kazakhstan, all interesting area of conflict, I would say. Uh, we do have an, one artist from Hong Kong, is our uh, newest artist in the program, and she's 24 and extremely talented, so I'm very excited that she joined us. Uh, we also started, when I started doing contemporary, I decided that uh, very much so in Asia, contemporary and classical have, a, there is a continuity. So we have been doing exhibition uh, both in London and New York and uh, where we mix the contemporary and the, the classical and the contemporary together to show that there isn't the kind of dichotomy between the two that sometimes people might perceive exist. Uh, we were among the very first to join Fine Art Asia, uh, to sign for Fine Art Asia. So we've been doing Fine Art Asia from the very first year. And I, uh, I think Calvin was not yet involved with Fine Art Asia at the time, but it, we were about 20 uh, galleries in the old convention center. And it felt like a little fraternity of, uh, uh, we were all a little bit worried. And, but it turned out to be a great success, not just commercially, but also people really enjoy the fact that they could come to, to this place and see 20 dealers at the time, a small number, but still see dealers dealing in different areas from different parts of the world. Um, We've also been, uh, before that, though, uh, I want to say we, our connection with Asia is very strong, and particularly with the region. I was doing exhibition in Taipei 
uh, with a local dealer of Himalayan art already in the 90s. My mother did a show of uh, early Chinese textile here in Hong Kong. I think it was 99, was, there was a big symposium at the Hong Kong uh, Art Museum. Uh, so we already at the time I felt that that the, there was a potential in the region, whether it was Taiwan, Hong Kong. I didn't expect China to be the mainland China to be the, the, the what it is today, of course. But I don't think anybody expected that. But um, we, we we are investing time, we are investing energy. And we also started exhibiting the very first. Uh, so this is another of our, uh, so we, we exhibited, sorry, in, in Maastricht, we still exhibit in Maastricht as well, in Holland, it's a, one of the most important fair in the world. Uh, this is another, our recent stand at Fine Art Asia last October. And the interesting thing about doing this fair is that uh, from the very first year we met uh, people who were very passionate about collecting in our field, in the classical field, they were knowledgeable, and they became uh, regular clients of the gallery. They were not just the one-off, they were really passionate about it. Uh, and um, this really, and every year I, I seem to uh, be able to uh, meet and, and engage with new people, which is exciting. Um, we also uh, participated in uh, Guardian Fine Art Asia, which is a new venture uh, in Beijing. Uh, so again, we're trying to uh, follow our DNA of breaking new ground, going to different places, and, and sort of, sort of uh, expanding our, our interests and our reach. And so the, the previous one was last year, and this is, was just a few weeks ago in Beijing. And again, it was fascinating to see the appetite of the public, not, not necessarily to buy art, but to look at it and to learn about it, which is very encouraging. Uh, we have also exhibited in Art Hong Kong, now Art Basel Hong Kong, from the very first year. So we, we continue our dual um, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde life of contemporary and classical, but, um, and we've enjoyed doing that uh, and seeing Art Basel developing, Art Hong Kong developing and mutating into Art Basel Hong Kong and in such an important event in the cal calendar of uh, uh, contemporary art fairs. And so this was one of our stand with one of the Tibetan artists we work with. Uh, this is, was, I think, two years ago. And this was uh, one, uh, the last couple of years. So it's been an interesting journey to, to, to see how that fair has developed as well. Um, and I think uh, what, um, uh, at a certain point, I, I I was living in London, I lived in London 25 years, and then I moved to New York, I was there for about four years. Uh, my, the, uh, the woman who then became my wife lived there, so I, you know, there's the say chase the woman. So I, I moved there, and, um, and I, you know, I had an office in New York, and I love New York, it's a great city, but somehow I didn't feel like I wanted to settle there uh, permanently, and, and my wife, whose family is originally from Hong Kong, she, you know, we thought about it long and hard, and we want to start a family, and we say, okay, let's, let's move to Hong Kong. And so we moved here in 2011, uh, the summer of 2011, and I must say, I immediately felt at home. It was a really, it's an easy, really easy place to do business, uh, uh, even though it's becoming a little more regulated. Um, uh, the banking system in particular, as we all know, uh, thanks to the our friends in America, but um, uh, the reality is it is an easy place to import, export art. It's a very welcoming city. Uh, it's, very, um, uh, it's a very lively city, of course. And, uh, but uh, the other thing we feel as well is that the, this is, uh, there's so much happening at the moment in Hong Kong. Uh, and it's not just, by the way, about galleries like ourselves uh, coming here. I mean, I'm obviously a Western gallery, even though I, I work only with Asian art, whether it's classical or contemporary. We, have, you know, we know that y Cube is here, Gagosian, etc. But the reality, there's so much that is already exists here. There's so much DNA in, in the region and in all of Asia that sometimes I get a little frustrated when people talk about Western gallery moving here or Western artists showing here. I think we have to look in Asia and, and, the, and the great uh, wealth, cultural, historical wealth that exists and create this connection between all of Asia, so dialogue between between Turkey and China, and, and and going beyond the Pacific, Australia, Indonesia, you know, it's just there's so much 
here that why look at New York or Paris or London? These are cities that will always be there, but, but I think this here is where, it, where it's really happening and where there is a possibility of growth and, and something that, you know, if, if you open a gallery in London or New York, you're, you're one of, uh, you, know, he, you know, I think Kevin said you, there are 100 galleries in New York, there are thousands of galleries and, 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 and so many museums and et cetera, whereas here, here it's happening, M plus is happening, the central police, it's taken a while, we know that, but it is happening, the central police station is happening. I was recently in Singapore, the National Gallery in Singapore just opened, it's a fantastic building, I encourage all of you to visit, with a great, great collection. We know about all the museum opening in China, we know about the museum in Korea, in, 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 uh, in Taiwan, in, in Japan, even in Indonesia, the Philippines, Malaysia. So I, I felt that, that one of the reasons I moved here for sure was that the being here, you can be part of this growth and this de development, cultural development, not just economical development. And, and if we are here at this point of, uh, of time, you can, however, uh, in a, even in, in a small way, can somehow influence that, that, that growth and be, and be part of it in a positive way. And, and something that I think is, is, uh, is, is almost impossible in a place like New York or London because everything is there. What development can you, can you do? And, and remember, if you are in New York, it's, everything is about New York. If you are in London, everything is about London. They're so narrow-minded city in reality. Whereas here we can truly become a very uh, you know, international in city, but also uh, build up this, this connection with Asia uh, and, and, and build up on this wonderful dialogue. Uh, um, I lost myself a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> that's, the guy, that's my space in, in Hong Kong. When I moved here, um, I've decided to, um, uh, I decided to, to, to go a little bit off the beaten track, but it's not so far, actually it's only 20, 15 minutes by taxi from here, but it's a this industrial area called Wan Chu Kang near Aberdeen. Uh, which is up and coming. The, the MTR will be uh, finished end of next year, I believe. And that will mean five minutes from Admiralty, seven minutes from uh, Central. And uh, these big industrial spaces that uh, you can develop in really nice, beautiful gallery. And I could afford the spaces, something I could never have done in Central. Or, uh, in, and also it's very hard to find in Central or even in Shenhuang similar size spaces. So we have a gallery which is over 5,000 square feet. Uh, we have a, you know, a, a area for, for an artist to stay and live with us, a bedroom, etc., storage, etc. And what we are trying to do here in Hong Kong is to continue showing the classical. I have a lot of collectors, of course, in the region, as I said, but we also want to bring artists that are not normally shown in Hong Kong, but not the Western artists. Again, I'd go back. I mean, I'm, I think you know, some of these Western artists are very overrated anyhow. Uh, but we would like to actually bring artists from uh, the rest of Asia. I have a partner in the space who is more interested in Middle East. But so we cover a very wide area. Uh, of course, Tibet is a very important part of what we I do. So I have a lot of Tibetan artists that I showed here. Uh, one of, um, at the bottom you see two recent shows, two different artists actually. Uh, one of them was with us for three weeks, and we had a, uh, one of his documentary was shown at Asia Society, which was a wonderful event. Coming up this week, I'm opening a show of, um, of Rashid Arin, and he is a legendary Pakistani-born, London-based artist. He's been in London since 1964. He's 80 years old, and he's now entered the canon of, um, uh, 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 canon of contemporary art worldwide contemporary art. But what I'm trying to do again is to bring uh, artists that uh, have this weight, that are Asian artists, but that are, they, are, they have become very important, not just uh, as Asian artists, but as global artists. Um, so he's gonna come over um, today, he's flying, I'm seeing him in a few hours, in fact, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, he's considered the father of modernist sculpture in, in, in England, so really, uh, quite important to do these things uh, for Hong Kong. Um, I also think, uh, I think one of the, the topic was, we were supposed to talk was also about the challenges, of course. And, and I think that uh, there are challenges. It's not uh, all anki dori, of course. Uh, one of the challenges, of course, we know uh, there is a, a downturn in the economy of China, and, uh, or at least a slowdown, whatever you call it. Uh, 
Of course, the very wealthy people will remain wealthy, for, uh, will remain wealthy, will buy art, but the reality is all the region is affected. I mean, it's a, the major engine in, um, of development. But I think, um, apart from that challenge, I think the, uh, the, the, the main challenge really is to create a culture of collecting as well, or, or at least to recreate a culture of collecting. I think we speak, very often we hear about these uh, record prices, uh, including the last you know, couple of weeks ago, $170 million for US dollar for a Modigliani painting. But uh, I think it's important to educate the younger generation uh, that uh, art is not about investment, it's not about money, or at least not just about that. Art is actually uh, a journey of discovery. Uh, it's a journey of an, an emotional journey, uh, an investment on your emotional development, on your intellectual development. And unless we, in, in a privilege, and unless we, we, ed, we, we make sure that this is how the next generation of collector in Asia approach this, we are, we are risking uh, 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 making art a, another commodity, which is not. It's really something that I've learned in my, myself. I've been involved with this since I was uh, 10, 11 years old, and I think it's, it's so much enriched my life in terms of uh, the people I meet and, the, and, and the, the work I do, and now that we do contemporary even more so, in a sense, because of course you, I'm working with living artists. And so I think this is, this is for me at the moment, I feel is the biggest challenge, uh, because uh, I think that you know, when I, when I grew, was growing up in, in, in Europe, I met a lot of great collectors, of course, and they come from a tradition where collecting was this passionate affair. You fall in love, you, you see an object, you can't resist it, you want it, and then, and then you, you just find a way to get it, and then, and then you meet the dealer who owns it, and then you, get, you, know, you become close to them, and so there is a lot of, a lot of emotional uh, and, and intellectual, as I said, um, value to collecting art, and, and I think, it's a wonderful journey, and, and I hope some of you will be inspired to follow this, get, get on the, after this afternoon, go on this journey, and, and I'm sure between the three of us, we can guide you and, 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 and make it a, a, a smooth journey, and not, uh, well, there's always ups and downs, but still. Uh, anyhow, thank you very much, it was a pleasure.